Hey, welcome to Two Doctors Homestead. My name's Daniel, and this is Prepper Pantry Pick of the Week. Another exciting episode here for you. And today, today we're talking about salt. We're going to have the salt conversation. I've got about six different kinds of salt here. Most of them we just picked up at Walmart today in our Prepper, Prepper Pantry run. Um, you know, I want to dig in. There's a lot of information about salt that's out there, the different kinds of salt, things like your Himalayan pink salt, uh, your basic sea salt, we have plain salt, and we have the iodized salt, right? A lot of information out there. Um, I can't verify any of the information I'm going to give you. I tried to pull a lot of different sources together to get as much information as I can. So don't hold me to all of it, right? I'm going to try to give you both sides because um, there are conflicting information, I would say, at the least on some of the, some of the different salts. So first thing I want to get into, let's talk about cost, right? Because cost is a huge factor when you're looking at the different salts. You've got your plain salt. This is great value. And you have the iodized salt, also great value. These were 64 cents for 26 ounces, which is two cents per ounce. So two pennies per ounce, same price, iodized or plain. The next step up is your sea salt. This is Morton's sea salt. Um, this was $2.54 for 17 ounces, which is 14 cents per ounce. So you go from two cents to 14 cents. So seven times as expensive for the sea salt. Next step, up was the Himalayan pink salt. This is six dollars and seventy-eight cents for seventeen point six ounces, or thirty-eight cents per ounce. So fourteen times more expensive than the plain salt, and more than double the price of the sea salt. So certainly the most expensive salt that we got today, right? So we know price-wise, this is the most expensive. So one thing I want to throw out there is all salt is salt, right? It is sodium chloride. So if you look on the back of sea salt, it says ingredients salt. So it says it contains salt, that's sodium chloride. You look on the back of the sea salt, it contains sea salt, which is also sodium chloride. Um, and it has yellow prostrate of soda, prusate of soda. I killed that. It's an anti-caking agent. If you look at the plain salt, it says salt and yellow prusate of soda, the anti-caking agent, and that's the idea it won't clump, hopefully, right? And should be all right to eat. Now, if you look at the iodized salt, this one gets complicated. This is salt. It also contains dextrose, which is a type of sugar. It contains the potassium iodide, sodium bicarbonate, and then the yellow prusate of soda. So we already said the yellow soda is for anti-caking. The dextrose is sugar. So you look, why does it have sugar in it? Well, the potassium iodide or iodine is, um, it will expire. So the dextrose actually helps act as a preservative for the iodide, the potassium and iodide that's in here. So it preserves the potassium and actually the iodized salt is the only one that would technically out of the four have a limited shelf life. So this has, they say about a five year shelf life um, and that's because of the iodine, iodized that's in here, iodide, that's in the salt that can expire. And if it does, it'll start to give off kind of a chlorine smell. So this one has a limited shelf life in that sense. Not that five years is super limited, but the other salts you would expect effectively have no shelf life, right? Salt is salt, sodium chloride. It's in the ocean. The salt in the ocean doesn't expire. They take the salt out of the ocean. They take the salt out of dead seas. Right, so if it's if you can dig it out of a dead sea and it's still good, um, it's going to last past 2028 that it says on the bottom of the container. But they have to put that kind of stuff on there. However, the the iodized salt maybe not so much. So that does have a limited shelf life, right? So we did say salt is salt. I'm not saying there's not a difference between these though, right? The salt part is just the salt part. Salt either comes from the ocean or from underground salt mines, basically underground sources of salt. It's pretty much most of the salt you're gonna see comes from that. So you do need salt to live, right? We do, salt is an important part of our health. Um, you need your average adult, depending on your health and any other health issues, you're looking at about 2,300 milligrams a day of salt that you need, which is about a teaspoon of salt. 
if you have high blood pressure, things like that, you probably need less salt, right? And you might find yourself on a thousand milligram salt diet or a very low salt diet, but never no salt. I mean, you need salt. Salt, uh, essential for brain function, muscle function, nervous system function, regulating your fluid balance, whole list of important stuff, transmitting electrical signals in the body, all good stuff. You need salt. Too much salt is also bad. Right, so there is that balance of salt, and if you eat a lot of processed foods, if you eat a lot of canned foods, eat a lot of foods at restaurants, you're probably good on salt, and you might be getting more salt than you realize, right? Um, salt is a preservative, and they say it's a flavor enhancer, right? So there's a lot of reasons companies and restaurants put a ton of salt in the food, um, and you do need salt, but you're probably, most folks are probably getting more salt in general um, than you need, right? But it is important, and they can say it's healthy for that reason, you would die without salt. You'd die with too much salt, maybe. Um, so why iodized salt, right? So you do need the iodine, you actually do. Um, you need 150 micrograms per day, on average, depending on your health, obviously. Um, so you do need that, and that was the reason they added the iodine to the salt, and it was actually back in the 1920s to combat iodine deficiencies, um, which will cause, uh, cause goiter. So there actually is health issues you can have, so that's why they put the iodine in the salt to treat those health issues. Now, a recent study in the UK is saying that they're actually having problems with iodine deficiency um, in teenage girls, right, in the UK. They're not getting enough of enough iodine. They are, however, not recommending the iodized salt, um, even though it has the iodine. So I'll let you read into that what you want. I know there's a lot of people that do not like the iodized salt. Um, I'm not sure I mentioned the dextrose, potassium iodine, sodium bicarbonate. It does have baking soda in it. I haven't quite figured out why. I did try to look that up. Um, don't know. Don't know why that's in there. Um, I did find a little research on if you mix baking soda and salt, which is essentially what this is, probably in different, different mixture levels. Um, it's great at removing odors, cleaning surfaces, and whitening teeth, which is probably not what you're thinking about when you're getting the iodized salt. So I'm not sure why it's there. Um, maybe drop a comment if you know why it's there. I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. Um, so once again, iodized salt. You need iodine, you need salt. You maybe don't need iodized salt. I said a lot of people don't like it and they're not even recommending it in the UK right now, even though they're having those iodine deficiencies. So it's something to think about. Not saying it's bad, right? You need both of those things. Whether or not you actually need this product is a decision you have to make. Talk to your doctor. Right, so the next one we're gonna go on is plain salt. Salt, ingredients on the plain salt, it's salt, yellow, yellow prostrate of soda, which is just the anti-caking agent. Um, so this plain salt is either from the sea or from an underground deposit. I suspect if it was from the sea, they would call it sea salt because they could charge seven times as much. So it's likely from an underground deposit. This is just salt. Once again, you need salt to survive. Salt by itself. Um, has a lot of uses. I was going to give some fun facts on what salt is good for and found a list of a hundred uses for salt and pretty much tapped out there. So you can Google it. Um, I think of salt beyond the, the health benefit of you do need some salt. Um, it's a great preservative. So if you're looking at like cured meats, preserving meat, um, the first thing you're going to jump to is salt, preserving fish, salted fish, salted pork. Uh, look for a recipe, right? You don't want to mess around with curing meats, curing salts without a recipe. But certainly look at it. Look at the, the plain salt is great for that. Um, wouldn't necessarily use the iodized salt for any kind of curing. You probably want to hit the plain salt or you get to the sea salt, right? Since we mentioned cured meats, I want to grab these guys. I do have uh, Prog Powder Pink Curing Salt number one and Pink Curing Salt number two. This is a slow cure salt. This is a fast cure salt. These are 100% toxic as they are in the bag. They contain sodium nitrate and sodium nitrite. Um, they are pink, but you certainly don't want to confuse them with Himalayan salt, right? They are pink salts. They actually made them pink so you would know not to eat them, but then somewhere along the lines, people started making pink salt. So that goes out the window. 
um, they're important. Whenever you look at any kind of meat curing recipe, you're likely going to see the addition of the, the probably the quick cure. So you'll see number one curing salt with regular salt. You use a lot less uh, regular salt for cured meats if you have the curing salt. So if your plan is to preserve meat, cure meat, um, you know, we butcher our own animals. If you want to make things like bacon or anything like that, you're probably going to use the curing salt. If you want to make uh, a, a meat that can sit out, prosciutto, salami, pepperoni, dry sausage, you're probably going to want the number two curing salt. Um, and in terms of volume, so one teaspoon of curing salt will do five pounds of meat. And this has about 100 teaspoons in it. So this bag could cure about 500 pounds of meat. So as a, as a prepper, something like this could be useful. You're talking about dry curing 500 pounds of meat. You get a recipe, practice, learn about it. Don't just figure it out on your own. Because once again, the curing salt by itself is toxic. Um, over time, in the curing process of curing meat, that toxic part goes away. But in the beginning, out the door, it is toxic. So you don't want to, you don't want to just figure it out on your own, right? But it's it's uh, it's important part of food preservation, meat preservation. So we hit the the plain salt. I want to jump into the sea salt. So why would you want sea salt? It's seven times more expensive. This comes from the sea. This probably comes underground. So sea salt is not as processed as a plain salt, um, and it's not the salt itself. Once again, all salt is salt. These all have salt. This is going to have additional minerals, right, that aren't as stripped out as, say, a plain salt. Now, on the container, it doesn't say anything about minerals, which is interesting, right? They're not claiming that it has special minerals in it on the container but if you do a little research you look online and they're saying this sea salt has a lot better minerals for you the people selling it don't necessarily say that and that's one thing i'll jump into after i talk about the himalayan salt so they say it has more minerals um, electrolytes sodium magnesium calcium potassium and they're essential for good health so they say this sea salt is healthier um, the people packaging it aren't saying that, but the general understood idea of the sea salt is that it's healthier because it has those minerals for you that your body needs. Jumping up to the Himalayan salt, I think we said this was 14 times more expensive. Same thing, it doesn't really say on the container that it has all these amazing minerals on it. Right, it just says that it has salt and it's the same sodium and whatnot per serving as the rest of the salt. Now, if you do your research on um, the salt, right, is there, they do say the Himalayan salt contains, I think it's 74, 84, 84 essential trace minerals, all of the minerals that your body needs, right? So that sense of having those minerals would suggest it's it's very good for you right is having all those minerals and once again the package doesn't really say that um, if you do your research if you look online if you look at the different articles it says yes himalayan sea salt you need those minerals right those minerals are very important which would make this the healthiest salt of the four now i have seen some research that says yes it has the minerals but not in the quantities you would need Right, so you're gonna have to take it for what you want, do your research on it, right? Once again, this doesn't really say on the container, the manufacturer is not promising that it has the 84 essential trace elements in it, but the research will tell you that it does. So you've gotta do your own research on that. There's certainly a different flavor between the salts, whether you like the Himalayan salt, whether you like the sea salt, a lot of uses, as I said, we found, I found a list that had 100 uses for salt, tapped out on that, because I'm not going to read you 100 uses for salt. I do like, we make our own soap, so I do like putting the sea salt in the soap, right, which is kind of cool to have a bar of soap with the sea salt in it. Um, your plain salt is probably my go-to for curing meats, and certainly if I'm going to use it on the table, the Himalayan pink salt is great for that. So they each have their use. They all have value, even the iodized salt. I know a lot of people hate the iodized salt, and I completely understand, and I don't personally understand all the ingredients that are in it. I'm sure they're there for a reason. Once again, they did that for public health. Um, 
And depending on your diet, it's likely you don't need the iodine. And depending on your diet, it's likely you don't need the salt either, right? But I don't want to completely put it down. Um, so that it has a value. It certainly has a place. So we've been dragging this out for a little bit. I said I want to dig in on salt. These all have zero calories. So from a prepper pantry perspective, um, there's no amount of salt you can eat to avoid starvation, right? But it is important. It is important um, not only for the preservation of other foods, but for your basic body functions, right? Your, 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 your mind, your body. You, you need some level of salt every day to survive. So I hope that helps. And please jump in. Let me know. As I said, I know a lot of people love Himalayan pink salt. A lot of great research out there on the Himalayan pink salt. And I like the Himalayan pink salt. But just wanted to point out there are, there's information out there that sort of questions, questions whether the, the minerals are really there at the levels that you would need for them to have value. Same thing with the sea salt. So once again, thank you for watching and we appreciate you.